Alrighty, so here we go. We're going to start off the video by looking at the body. Now, I'm not here to actually paint this truck today, so if you guys are looking for a painting video, it has not happened yet. Uh, in fact, I've just gotten my supplies today, uh, and I want to talk about this build because a lot of people have written to me and say that they're not really sure how to paint. Uh, they're not really sure how to get ideas for their scale projects. If they do want patina or how to weather it, you know, how do you do that? And I'm going to say right away, I've always said this, I am no pro painter, but I can say that when you're going to do an older farm build or a patina or something like that, that gives you a lot of leeway in making mistakes and accidents. So I, I, I just thought, you know, if I went and showed you a little bit of my process, maybe you guys could get some help. Maybe you guys could give me some advice, you know, all of the above. So first thing I would do when I'm going for a project is really go to Google, put in the model of the vehicle that I want to uh, replicate or you know have fun with depending on what I'm doing and then go and get some color scheme ideas like this red one is absolutely beautiful then we can have a look at this old dump truck now these are all uh, pristine and brand new but I, I kept going on a search this is a beautiful hot rod. I think this is really a neat one right here. Uh, this hot rod has some beautiful colors. Again, no real uh, patina or age on this one, but the orange and the black and the chrome, they look great. Now, mine already comes with a blacked out bumper, but that's something I could, I could fix. Moving on from here. Here is one that reminds me of uh, another modeler here on YouTube or on Facebook, I should say. Uh, his name is Harry Cover. He actually did an amazing job building one of these old school trucks, very similar to this blue and type of patina. Now let's have a look at this one right here. This one is all rust all the time. We can really see the uh, primer work has been done and all of the rust is looking just amazing. But again, multiple layers. So I would wanna have a look at this. This is a hot rod style. I'm actually doing uh, spin tires, obviously, so I want to have, you know, it's hard to say. If you guys haven't seen it, um, it, really, it's more along the lines of like an army style truck. Look at this. That's a great hot rod. Also showing some great weathering here and layered paints, basically, if that's what we we're doing when modeling. Moving on, have a look at this beautiful one. I think this is stunning. My favorite one that I found, it's an old fire truck. It's a different model than the one I have. The bumper is different, the siren, everything is aged and has this beautiful back on it. And I think this, as a pump truck, this would look absolutely fantastic. Is it gonna be very capable on the trail? Absolutely not, but it's gonna be great on camera. Uh, here is a version that is the new one, the restored version. Moving on, here is more of a darker one, but it is like a blue, black, and red, if you wanna have an idea for that, with chrome and a white bumper. My son really liked this one. Here is a beautiful rat rod truck. Check that out for all the people. I know, half your job, wipe your keyboards off, no drool. <laughs> Everyone's gonna want me to do this one immediately, um, but I'm not going to. I wanna stay true to the, the spin tire build that I'm doing, but I just wanted to show that there are options out here for rat rod trucks, and this one just happens to have a sleeper on the back. Isn't that stunning? Very Mad Max-like. Now, here's where we're getting closer to what I'm thinking. This one has a dump bed on it. I'm actually gonna build mine just the way the kit is. Um, but this is the type of patina I like. I like the look of the old style uh, wheels. So I'm gonna pay special attention to all the extra details, like the rust uh, on the chassis, the rust on the rims, that whole kind of thing. This is probably gonna be the most challenging paint job I have ever done. Now, this is absolutely beautiful. What a great angle of this uh, truck. We can see here, if you were looking closer at this vehicle, and I won't be able to get you in, I think the camera will probably start to fade out on me here and focus, it didn't. All of this is actually bumps, and there's actual moss growing right on this truck. I'm intrigued by uh, this uh, area right in here, the orange area. I like how this is, uh, the rust is like dribbling down, plus it is like, it must have had a sign on here, multiple layers blasted through, and you'll notice that underneath is white, which is basically the very same color I'm gonna be starting with. 
But I've been doing lots of research online. I went into my local hobby store to figure out what type of paint to buy. And there are so many different theories on how to do this uh, and options. And I'm curious because some of those options are really expensive and some of them weren't gonna cost so much. Let me explain. And if you look at what I mean, look at these. These are uh, what I picked up at my local hardware store. Uh, normal plastic paint, because being a hard white plastic, I thought, hey, maybe this is gonna work. I talked to those guys there. They said, yeah, if you actually use this primer, even though the, um, the plastic is exceptionally smooth uh, on the body over here, uh, this will adhere to the plastic, and then you could go ahead and layer on what you wanted. Now, this is something new, I haven't seen this before. Uh, camo coat, non-reflective paint. I love the matte color of it. So we have like the olive drab, we've got the sand color, uh, a little bit uh, of the darker gray, and then of course the flat black. Now this was really fairly inexpensive, maybe 10, 20, 30, 40, uh, 45, 50 dollars for paint. Now this is Canadian dollars, US would be obviously less, uh, and I'm intrigued by this because this is to paint white studio or white patio furniture, that kind of thing. Now, over here, I went to my hobby store and picked up paints, and they're, you know, considerably more expensive for a little bit less. $10.79, right? Uh, 11 almost $12, another 11 another 11 And what colors did I get here? So basically gray, green, dark green, olive drab, and dark green too. Plus this is a light gray primer. I also got a flat clear. I know this is a TS. And this one here is basically uh, uh, also for hard plastics, uh, the NATO brown. So I really like the choice, but when we're looking at 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, almost $84 for this, and then we're looking at over here, I question, you know, like that's almost, you know, that's $30 savings for me if I would have just gone over here. So some of you right now, please leave your comments in the comment section below. Have you guys used this paint before on hard bodies and has it worked for you? I'm not really concerned about it flaking off as long as I've got a good uh, primer underneath and I'm curious to see if these are gonna work. Uh, these ones here, of course, this is acrylic lacquer, I believe, uh, and this one over here is a lacquer as well. I can't remember, um, but I know it's different, which may cause cracking. I'm not sure. This stuff is basically, uh, I believe, so you can spray it on airplanes and it doesn't basically dissolve styrofoam. I think that's what that one is, but we can still use these together. Let me know if I can't in the, in the video description box or comment section. I know that uh, the PS is the wrong paint. That's why I don't have any of that here. Over here, look at this. So this has a bench seat, a whole detailed inside to it. Of course, the firewall, everything else. And look at the amount of detail. So many colors and so many layers. Even the front is not uh, chrome anymore. It's more like a white and rust, the way it's kind of, you know, built itself out. So. A few things. Number one, you'll laugh at this, but here is a whole package of different types of uh, brushes. This is going to be used for detail work and the rust for me. Here are the uh, paints that I'm going to be using to hand paint. This was actually for a tank uh, setup, right? So you could get all these different colors in here. So I'm still going to have the silver, the olive drabs, uh, the browns, everything like that, plus a thinner. I want to show you guys, and I'm going to be doing it for the first time, so you can watch along with me, how to use thinner uh, to make it that rust kind of drip down and kind of look like it's been there for a long time. Well, you know, like this kind of, this runniness right here is what I'm after. That is not what she said. <laughs> so here's something else that just kind of arrived at the hobby shop. I haven't seen it before. They haven't used it before. But weathering your stuff has become quite uh, a, a popular thing, right? We all love good patina, especially on our scale trucks. Yes, so expensive in Canada, almost $20. But this is a weather system. I am aware that Tamiya or Tamiya or Tamiya or however you want to pronounce it from wherever you're from offers a weathering kit, but check this out. From what I understand and what I was told at the hobby shop, shop here, I'll just get the colors so you can see. This is a soot 
then a, a dark rust, a medium rust, and a light rust. This is actually metal powder that's colored. And when I, it has a self-adhesive on the inside from what I read. Yeah, look at this, self-adhesive to most surfaces to surfaces. When you actually paint this onto your plastics or anything, it's non-corrosive, but it will actually stick to the plastic and the metal in it will rust. Is that absolutely genius or what? Things to consider, my friends. I have a whole chassis um, that I have to age up. I've got the wheel rims, I've got the actual rubber I have to age, all of this, the chassis, all of it. I wish I had some dirt in the end. In the end, I'll just run it through a puddle and then it'll have like the finish effect that I need it to. Um, but for those that are paying attention, uh, you'll see that I have made a few small changes off the camera. Uh, I did realign this um, uh, drive shaft right here. You can see that everything is lined up properly. I had my spline turned once by accident, not good. New wires, no uh, issues there. And I did switch over to a 55 turn, uh, heavy duty, basically hand wound brushed motor. I am gonna lose speed but I am going to gain a ton of torque. And if I'm, you know, like needing um, uh, weight to, to, to give this whole truck traction, it's only this side that's driven, whichever side uh, is, is able to get grip will, right? Because I'm leaving it unlocked. It's a two wheel drive truck for those that are just joining us. This whole front is uh, done. You'll also see that I switched out this steering rod, made it a bit longer and wider so I don't have any issues on the inside. And check it out, I've got a bit of a twist in this. Well, of course, this isn't helping. But as it sits by itself, there is a slight twist in it, which I love already because yes, I'm sure something is out of alignment or out of whack a little bit, but not a big deal because the frame of this is gonna be twisted as well. Uh, everybody was commenting on these tires. I probably will put some siping in it with my Dremel. I'll just cut along the sides. Um, but as you see here, these tires, they are very, very similar to what we're looking at on this truck. So very realistic. Um, guys, thanks for joining me today. You can see I have a ton of work and decisions to make. Yes, this is pretty much the color I'm gonna go with, uh, or maybe just a little bit more on the greener side instead of the blue. Uh, guys, thank you. If you have any hints, tips, tricks, or anything like that, please leave it in the comment section below. And uh, I'm gonna get back to figuring out what I want to do here, because I also still have this whole back bed to assemble, right? And plus this plastic, this is a plastic bottom and this is what the truck is really supposed to look like. So uh, that's my goal, my friends. I just wanna make it look a little bit more aged and uh, hopefully you're subscribed and you can keep up to date. Guys, see you in the next episode. Bye for